No, this can't uh oh, be no, it's not. Oh my, oh, oh. Y'all, this episode just barely begun. We can't be have this much action this quickly. Hey there, NavyDoc5184 here. Welcome to my next reaction to X-Men 97. We're on episode three, Fire Made Flesh, and episode two left me with quite a few questions. I really want to know what's going on with Rogue and Magneto, because honestly, I don't like Gambit being done dirty like that. That's my dude. Um, what's going to happen with Storm and now that she's got no powers, and what the hell is going on with two jeans that is definitely the one question i really hope we get it answered this episode so we will go ahead and get started make sure you stick around afterwards for a post reaction discussion we'll get started with x-men 97 episode 3 fire made flesh all right good maybe we'll get some answers quickly mind is dense vague and uncertain memories Okay. Are you all right? I'm, I'm fine, Scott. Let's call this mystery gal in the bed, Jean Doe. All in favor? I mean, not bad. But the gene that lies on this couch would appear to be the actual Jean Grey. I used gamma rays to isolate the hemoglobic properties of both Jean's genetic markers. English sugar. Thank you, Rogue. Is older. The proper age. Yours, while identical, is not. Ergo, our gene is a clone. Uh, uh oh, what's up with this? This is so confusing. So, if she's not the real gene, then who is she? I am Jean Grey, member of the X Men, one of the first. You know me. We just have to be sure. Storm would have believed me. I mean. Ugh, I don't know, y'all. I don't know what to make of this. I can take him. He's fine. Beast tests won't change the fact that I'm Nathan's mother. With the professor and Storm gone and Magneto here, it's been a lot for everyone. I mean, true, very true. Just <sighs> go. Oi. Oh, Jean Grey, are you Jean? Hello? Who's there? Uh. Answers. Okay, what the hell? Scott, you have to get Nathan. I know who cloned Gene. A man so dark and twisted he can be described as nothing other than. Mr. Sinister. But you can call me. Father. You! Oh. Hell. Uh. This can't be good. This can't be good. This is not good. You want our son, Nathan? Yes, that's why I made you. Baked you. Time to wake up, my queen. Storm oh, no! Quite useless. My influence over your mind is flawless. Uh oh. No. G uh, I don't know what to call her. I was about to say Jean, but that's not Jean. Uh, you? Mommy's busy. Uh, uh, whoever you are. Uh, maybe we'll stick with the uh, Jean Doe. I don't know. Oh my! This Only is your dark desire. They shall know my inferno. Oh. Oh boy. Hmm. Looks like Magneto and Rogue have the danger room next. Oh, and all tomorrow too. Wow. Rogue's really training her stamina with the new boss. It don't say that. Oh. Stay on patrol. <laughs> on second off, maybe Gamma go look for Rogue right now. <laughs> oh boy. If it's not one thing, it's another. I already done forgot about the whole thing with Rogue and Magneto. Now that that's a nice friendly reminder. Still think they do him gambit dirty though. Say it ain't so. Get on back to the swamp with the rest of them nasty What the? What the? What is? 
what well, I, I would say don't break the TV, but it looks like it's already Whoa. Monster. No. This can't oh. Be no, it's not. Oh my oh ho. Oh. Y'all, this episode just barely begun. We can't be have this much action this quickly. Where do you perform, brother? No! You're not real! You the freak! Uh, thanks, Jubilee, but what is going on? Oh, dear. I think one of us has the wrong floor. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I love B. She's like a comic relief when needed, but, um, what is going on? Yeah, we can never unsee that. What the heck is going on? Haven't you figured it out? We're in hell. That is a very appropriate, um, uh, hypothesis is the word I was looking for there. Oh, it's Jean Jean. Well, you came to just in time. Did she repair the mansion? Because that was a mess. What does he even see in you? Sinister's controlling you. you yes, don't yes. Have to do this. Who doesn't? Me? Who am I? Say my name, Scott. I. M, the Goblin Queen. Okay. Maybe I'll call you GQ for short. No! Uh What's she doing with Nathan? Cyclops, status report. Sinister created the clone. Sinister has plagued us far too long, and it is time the madman pay for his malevolent appropriations. I can show you where he is. You know, Magneto, I'm with you, but I still don't like you because of what you're doing with Rogue. At last, the spawn of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. The combination what? of your parents' unique genetics makes your potential unlimited, your powers untold. What are you doing? Co are you cooking him? What is this? Perfect creations will be born this night by my will and genius. <laughs> oh, we need to stop this dude. I knew you'd follow, Scott. It's all you do. Come on. Ugh, excuse me. I do not want to fight you, comrade. I don't want to fight you either. I want you to fight for me. Resist it. Yes, my queen. Oh no! Oh no, not again! Okay, who did what? Give us the boy, you brimstone clone! Okay, that was my idea. I should have guessed that. Oh. Oh my goodness. Woo! Oh, Magneto. I applaud your magnetism. But my telekinetic charm extends beyond mere metal. Uh oh! Look at you. I should have you as a toy. Oh man, he got messed up. Oh! I'm sorry. What a shot! <clears throat> Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Keep it. Come on, Judy. Like riding a bicycle. Remember how to control it. Come on. Concentrate on my mind, Jeannie. Just my mind. Right here. I'm right here. What? I. It's hard for me to accept Wolverine being so calm and supportive. <laughs> I do have to remember, he did always have a soft side for Jean, though. Oh man. All that to you. More. Uh, Lo Logan? Scott, he's in danger. You are not going anywhere. My body won't be an issue. <laughs> oh. Now. You. Come on, Gene. 
I don't know what you're gonna do, but Is she here? Hello there. So Jean is using actual Jean's memories to put in the GQ. Don't worry. All I do is think too. I remember this. But what happened? When did we find our power? Penny, watch out! In a moment of high stress. Awakened our gifts. All oh, this pain. It's my pain, not yours. Can you say which of these memories are yours and which are mine? I think, I think so. so. You are nothing! Okay. Is this Nathan? Why is it only now hitting me how much hair that boy had right after being born? Nathan, how could I forget? He's more than a memory. He's a living reminder of the purest love two people can share. And no one can ever, ever take that away from you. Oh man, I'm so confused about what's going on right now because... Okay, so she's breaking out. Okay, so it looks like she is officially out of Sinister's control. Good. If only Xavier's orphans knew the future we have in store for them. What? Impossible. Stay away from our son! Bulls. Okay. Doom the boy. Uh, explain. Your house is on fire. And your child all gone. Oh God, Nathan. You monster! What have you done? That's a good question. What did what's going on? It's a Beast? No organic virus strain. Sinister was likely exposing Nathan to it in the hopes of making him invincible. It could take months, even years, to develop a cure. That's not good. So now what? So what you're saying is not here, not in our time. But Wait, there's a cure in your is that Gene or GQ? In the future, Beast's nearly fixed your time band. This band only got enough juice for Nathan and I. Oh, no, no. There has to be another way. I won't be like my father. I won't abandon my son. Don't any of you know how it feels to be abandoned? You're not abandoning him. He won't feel abandoned. I can't be a part of this. I'm sorry. Dude, you have to let him... Oh, man. Somebody talk some sense to that man. I'm saying somebody because I don't know if Gene needs to talk to him or if GQ. You're scared. You ask yourself why we did this. Is something wrong? But you are perfect, my baby. No, in our time here, we thought about you endlessly. Oh, I see what she's doing. So she she's giving him the bishop, but she's putting that message in his mind so he understands that they aren't giving him away or anything. They're trying to cure him. Do your thing, Bishop. Cyclops is not gonna be happy, but it's for the best. This is your home too. How much do you remember? It's strange but most everything then you know how much i've wanted to go to start a new life my next life will be mine take care jean call me madeline Pryor. farewell madeline farewell jean all right so gq is madeline Ooh. oh this is awkward Dang, I already done forgot about Storm. Holy cow. No summer like a Texas summer. But I wouldn't give if someone could just 
make it rain. So who are you? Name is Forge, Storm. I'd like to help you get back what you've lost. Eh? Interest peaked. And of course, that's where they would end the episode, because why not? Okay. All right, y'all, that was X-Men 97, episode three, Fire Made Flesh, and man, oh man, what an episode that was, man. That was like nonstop action from the jump. I didn't even realize, I mean, honestly, like the time that that episode took, it did not feel like it was that long. That was a really gripping episode. Um, don't, I mean, Sinister being back, that is not a good thing. I, I don't even want to know what's going to happen with this series. I, I suspect that he's probably going to be like the big baddie of this, but I don't know. I, I got a horrible feeling that there's something way bigger going on. And, uh, man. I don't even know where to begin with this. I will say this, I am glad that uh, we weren't made to wait very long to figure out what the story of the two gene was. So um, we'll call the clone Madeline since that's what um, she called herself at the end. I was calling her GQ uh, for a Goblin Queen, but uh, now that we know that she's going by Madeline now, we will go with that. But man, talk about a twist. I'm honestly kind of care. well, no, because now that I kind of think about it, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, especially with Jean's psychic abilities, because with the fact that um, when uh, Madeline was going through Jean's mind and the memories being so fragmented, it obviously kind of made sense, you know, because I wasn't thinking clone right away until Beast kind of brought it up. It just threw me off that he said Madeline was the clone because she was the one that had the complete memories, whereas the actual Jean had the fragmented memories, which that would make a lot more sense for the clone. So to find out that the one with the fragmented memories was the actual Jean Grey, I'm assuming that what Sinister did was transfer her memories to Madeline. That's my guess. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know, but that would make sense because Madeline remembered everything, even life events. But the fact that well, first off, I really want to know what Sinister's main plan was with Nathan. I'm sure that will be something that, that gets explained later on in the series, but you know, not exactly something I would expect to have answered right away. Um, hopefully, whatever he did, uh, whatever Sinister did to Nathan, hopefully Bishop is able to figure out a cure and get him you know fixed up because man man I feel bad for Cyclops that is a lot of crap for him to be going through I mean he's just finally starting to accept Magneto you know but having to still deal with the loss of the professor you know going through such a high with the birth of Nathan then finding out that the person he was with wasn't even Gene to begin with I mean that's gotta take a mental toll on anybody and Man, Madeline was really working everybody. Thank goodness Jean came to when she did. And what about that whole snafu at the mansion? I mean, Morph said it pretty well. That was pretty much like they were just transported to hell because that's about what was going on. Because I know the whole thing, which does make me wonder, where were Magneto and Rogue during that whole time? Were they in the... Uh, the danger room as they called it because they missed out on a lot of that stuff and I'm very curious on what was going on um, as I said during the actual show you know I'm like you know I'm getting behind Magneto but I'm you know I still kind of dislike him because I don't like him getting in between Rogue and Gambit you know G Gambit's my dude now originally I think I might have said this uh, in my first reaction uh, especially when I found out that Morph was actually in the show Morph started off as probably my favorite X-Men uh, as a kid, but you know, considering that he wasn't really a regular per se, uh, Gambit is, I guess, technically my my favorite. He's the one I like the most. But if you had, if I had to pick between one or the other, I'd probably go with Morph still. But in terms of somebody who was a regular from the original animated series, uh, gotta go with Gambit. I mean. 
How can you not like Gambit? That is a cool dude. That is a cool dude. So I, I don't like Gambit being done dirty the way he's been getting done. I really don't like that. But uh, that's definitely a story I hope they elaborate on a little more. Uh, Rogue got some splaining to do. Uh, Rogue has got some splaining to do. So, oh boy. So we've hit on Gene. We hit on Madeline. Um, Sinister is back. And he is causing trouble all over the bit. Um, and I gotta say, Wolverine, just being normal Wolverine, how can you not like Wolverine? I mean, it kind of makes me really appreciate Hugh Jackman's um, approach with him, because I feel like he's get, getting, like, the real essence. Like, every time I see him as Wolverine, that's kind of like how I expect to see Wolverine act, which is probably why so many people love him as Wolverine. It's like he's got the character down so well, it's almost scary. And I love him in this because he's just so, he's got that seriousness about him, but at the same time, I'm not gonna necessarily say he's a comic relief, but he has those moments where you're just like, oh my God, really? Like from him, you know? And honestly, I know I was talking about how, um, it's weird kind of seeing Wolverine with a soft side per se, but it's like, I always seem to forget that when it comes to Jean, he definitely has a very soft side for her. So it really should not have been that weird for me to see him so tender with Jean. Should not have shocked me at all. Now, in terms of comic relief though, Beast is on point. He, his moments, always seem to come at the point where we need them the most give me okay honestly the way this is going we're probably going to get a lot of comic relief moments from beast i mean we are in episode three and all three of these episodes have had some serious action to them and it's so weird that i guess i'm just not used to seeing this much at the start, like I'm used to the first few episodes, if not the whole first season, you know, kind of being done to build up, to kind of set up everything. But it's like, there's so much going on. It's just, it's like, you don't have time to really sit and breathe. And the thing that scares me the most, and man, like, I'm just thinking about how, like, much this episode got me we're two episodes away from the episode that i have seen wreck people like i i haven't seen any synopsis i have no idea what's going on all i know is that anytime i've seen anybody bring up episode five they always talk about how much it wrecked them and already and like with everything that's thrown up with me in episode you know episodes one through three and how it just feels like everything is just really building up emotionally i am really nervous to get to episode five and if it's really as rough as i've been hearing people say it is i, I may have to take a small break <laughs> Normally, you know, when they have a full season out for something, I try to do the reaction to at least the full season before I pause on the series. But if episode five is anywhere near as bad, as, and when I say bad, I don't mean bad as in quality wise. I mean bad as in I'm going to be an emotional wreck. Um, I may have to take a couple weeks to recover before I get back to this. You know, maybe I'll react to like a couple of movies or something that I haven't seen, but we'll see when we get there. I just know I'm really nervous for it right now, but man, man, oh man, what an episode. One of the few times where I could say it's just, it's amazing. Like, I'm not going to say there weren't dull moments, but the dull moments that were, were there, I say dull in the sense that there was really no action. Like, they weren't boring. They're, it was just, with as fast paced as everything has been, there's like those dull moments are like, hey, viewer, take a chance to breathe, because it's about to get crazier. And boy, oh boy, it has gotten crazier with each episode. I'm honestly kind of surprised I've, I guess you could say, been pulled to Magneto's side so quickly. I was honestly expecting 
for him to have to do way more, but he grew on me way quicker than I expected. And I'm just very curious to see where this goes. I mean, it really looks like he's really taking this seriously and um, leading the X-Men and doing it right and actually really being helpful. So honestly, I'm very pleased to see that. I just hope something doesn't happen that changes that, but got a lot of episodes to go and a lot can happen. So, um, glad to see Roberto back. I uh, still want to know more of his story and uh, hopefully we will get that. We shall see, but for the meantime, got our answers with Jean. So, we got, got the thing settled between Jean and Madeline. But, of course, uh, you know, I saw a storm at the bar and it's like, oh, hey, I completely forgot about her, which really kind of is a testament to the episode that you know, all the things I was wondering about that episode made me completely forget about them. I mean, granted, it added more questions, but I mean, it still added more questions even with Storm because, uh, oh man, I already forgot his name, but, um, you know, the guy who was a friend of Professor X who knew Storm right away and, uh, was talking about, uh, restoring what she lost. So that means Storm is going to get her powers back. I hope so, because it's going to be hard for me to imagine X-Men without Storm. So, I think that is pretty much it for anything I have to discuss with this episode. So, I will leave it right there. And thank you all for stopping by and watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way, you can be aware of any time I upload a new reaction video. And definitely make sure you check out some of my other X-Men reaction videos. Um, as well and also if you um, hit the join button to become a member you will get early access and ad free versions of all my reactions on this channel uh, usually up to 48 to even a week ahead of schedule because I try to record these all a week ahead of time and then get them all edited and that way you know by you know for Saturday or Sunday I can get them all uploaded to the channel um, they'll be available to the public uh, sporadically. I don't need to add all that. I'll redo that part. So, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, leave it there. I will thank you all for uh, stopping by. If you are not subscribed to the channel, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be aware of any time I upload a new reaction. And also, if you're interested in supporting the channel even more and getting some special perks, feel free to join the channel. Um, I have two different tiers, but even if you join the most basic, you will have access to early access as well as ad free versions of all my reaction videos and definitely make sure you check out some of my other reactions to x-men 97 thanks again for stopping by and i'll catch y'all down the road <laughs>